wonderful air, wonderful ale. I'm back in Emmerdale country on the track of one of Yorkshire's best known sons. Born into a mill owning family, he was no trouble, and he's earned his keep this past 30 years as a television presenter. He's very proud of his roots, and to this day will only wear jackets that are made locally. In fact, he and his whole gents natty suiting are very well known in these parts. Uh, oh, hello. Oh, hello. 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 Right. Good to see you. And you. And I'm right, he's a popular lad, isn't he? Oh, yes, everybody knows him round here. He's an Emmerdale fan, but we're also big fans of his, aren't we? Yes, oh, definitely. We like you, Michael. And welcome to Yorkshire. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Now, the, uh, the man we're after hosts a daily television show, and we are informed that among his fans is Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, he's also famous for a close encounter with a small rodent. Well, I rodent. <laughs> yes, more about <laughs> rodents. Come on, See you later. Come on. Yes, he's here today for a, a photo call at Cathy's Tea Rooms with his friends from Emmerdale. I think it's slightly over the top. Who's <laughs> 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 in? Do you want to get in there, Hello, Hello George. How are you? Do you want some good on the other side of Ian? Oh, Hello, Richard. Richard. Who's in trouble again? You're not. Well, I'm seeing it. Excuse me, you're not even in this. It's shocking and harrogate. I've been loving harrogate today. It's so much time. It's a wonderful song, isn't it? Flashbang, what a photograph. This is great. Can I come and be seen sharing a joke? Because if you do say yes, I will then be able to say, tonight, Richard Whiteley, this is your... <laughs> Five pounds. <laughs> five stone. It's worried that does it, Richard. Anyway, you've got nothing to worry about because a, a moor away from here, we have a studio with lots of friends waiting to say nice things. <laughs> 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 right. Well, Richard Whiteley, this is your life. Among your dearly beloved, gathered here in Leeds, are your mother, Margaret, your sister, Helen, assorted colleagues from Yorkshire Television, headed by Sir Paul Fox and Bruce Gingell, and your girlfriend, Emmerdale actress, Catherine Apanovich. Well, I can hear the sound of empty tankards being put down as other regulars leave the bar to join us. <laughs> Well, obviously, he is no stranger to Emmerdale. No, he's one of our gang. Uh, we do aspire to be Richard because he has his countdown programme five times a week and he has his news five times a week. And we refer to him as he does himself, as twice nightly, whitely. <laughs> Once yearly, nearly, get it right. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, Richard, I mustn't imply that your fans are confined to the north of England. In 1982, you made television history as the first person to appear on the brand new Channel 4. You hosted a gentle words and numbers game with contestants racing against the clock. The phenomenon of countdown was born. Since then, a wider audience has come to appreciate your easy style, your way with words and your taste in menswear. <laughs> For many yards of fine cloth and nearly 2,000 episodes later, the show is still one of Channel 4's top programmes. A regular viewer and a keen commentator on your appearances offers a few well-chosen words, young Terry Wogan. Well, thank you very much for the young, Michael, although it's a bit of a body blow to dear old Richard, the oldest man on Channel 4, the doyen of <laughs> quiz shows. <laughs> Not true. Dear old boy, who, in all those years is still the same. Same jokes. Same <laughs> flushed appearance. Same carol. 
Ferret, please, Carol. Goes out the cry. And then you meet somebody who's been watching Countdown and they say, Did you watch Countdown this week? And you say, Yes, I did. And uh, how was Richard Whiteley? No improvement. <laughs> Make a lovely evening of it. Congratulations. And I'm proud to be part of your program. Thank you, Carol. In every edition of Countdown, you had a trusty sidekick who's amazed us all with her mathematical brilliance. And she's good at sums. As you know, she's just done some multiplying of her own. On the show, U plus one equals Carol Vorderman. Hello, Whiters. I'm so sorry I can't be with you tonight. But as you know, I've got a new edition. And this is he, just a few days old. This is Cameron King. Hello, Uncle Richard. Ventriloquist <laughs> already. Now... I've worn this in your honour because I know it's a particular favourite of yours. And as you know, Richard, one of the questions that viewers on Countdown always ask me is, what's that Richard Whiteley really like? And I say, hmm, he's a one-up, and you certainly are. And I'd like to say thank you for 15 wonderful years on Countdown. You've been tremendously supportive of me during that time. 2,000 shows we've done, haven't we? Here's to another 2,000. Have a fantastic time tonight. Love from all of us, including him. Bye. Now, Richard, to your life. You were born on December the 28th, 1943, at the Duke of York's nursing home in Bradford. The first child of Margaret and Kenneth Whiteley. You were christened John Richard. J.R. was soon being shot for the family album. What a picture, what a picture, I'm chilly, I'm bum, 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 sing it in your family album. Now, your father, who died in 1992, was the third generation to run the family mill-making fine worsted cloth, but the appeal of Thomas Whiteley and co. didn't extend to the fourth generation. Why was that? Well, like a lot of kids of my age, we got a TV in 1952, uh, the purple screen, the Ferguson, the 12-inch, uh, just before the coronation, and I was nine, and I was fascinated by television, and I always wanted to work in television. I wanted to be cameraman at first, probably still do, actually, um, and had, you know, no interest in, in, in textiles, really, and just was keen on telly. And Margaret, uh, young Richard was bowled over by the telly. Yes, he was. And may I just say, I only had three lines to say, and he said them. <laughs> <laughs> so that's got me out. <laughs> but you'll tell us about what he did as a small boy. How did his love of cameras manifest itself? Oh, well, itself? he used to make cameras uh, from cardboard boxes and earphones, and uh, so he was destined for TV. Yes, in one way or the other. Well, home uh, was in Bailden near Bradford, and when you were nine, the family moved just 100 yards around the corner. A short distance, but a momentous step for you. Your new house had once been home to a cricketing hero of yours. He was captain of Yorkshire, no less, and he's turned out tonight. Ronnie Burnett. Oh, yes, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Pleasure. Wonderful. Wonderful. All those years, and you, and you never told me. You were never aware of your young fan, then, Ronnie? Never. No, I had no idea. But I would like to say, Richard, how much I've admired your career, not just what you've done, but the way you've done it, because you've always remained so natural. You've never altered. You've never got a big head. And I think you're marvellous. Lovely thank to you see you. Much. Ronnie Burnett, thank you very much. Meanwhile, at Heatherbank School, it soon became apparent that the future TV star wouldn't be covering the Olympics. And it's a good job the cameras missed your marathon swim at Bingley Baths. It's more than 40 years ago, and he was there, Peter Coleman. Peter, yeah. <laughs> 